Thank you. Uh, my pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm going to present to you some version of quantum computation that is uh, universal and it has some intrinsic fault tolerance by itself, which I don't think it's, uh, it's fully appreciated. Uh, so uh, I'm going to, what is this one? Uh, I'm going to introduce to you the adiabatic quantum computation and uh, for open system, I'm going to show you two approaches. One of them is based on density matrix approach, uh, which requires Markovian approximation. And the other one is a non-Markovian approach based on a series of incoherent tunneling between the two branches of potential, which I will tell you more about. But the last one requires two-state model, which I will justify why uh, this is the case. Okay, adiabatic quantum computation is a very simple algorithm. Yeah, the Hamiltonian is uh, written this way in such a way that uh, at the beginning, uh, it starts from the initial Hamiltonian and the, it is by design in such a way that the ground state is easily accessible, either by relaxation or by preparation, you can access the ground state. And the final Hamiltonian at the end of evolution is by design in such a way that uh, its ground state solves the problem for you. And uh, the hope is if you move along the ground state very slowly, you stay on the ground state and at the end you can, you can solve the problem uh, uh, that you are interested in. But the dangerous point of adiabatic quantum computation is where the, there is a gap, uh, the gap between the, the first two states are, uh, is small. And uh, if at this point the transition from the, the ground state to the first excited state can happen and if the separation, energy separation between these two states and the upper state is, is large enough, you can focus on these two energy levels as a two effective two state system. And uh, the problem now becomes landau zinner problem which was solved long time ago. And the probability of transition from the ground to the excited state is given by landau zinner probability, uh, which is exponentially dependent on the gap. Uh, if the sweep is linear with time, then you can read, uh, re uh, replace this one over TF as a, in the speed of evolution in the, the, uh, the exponent to get some criteria of what, uh, uh, how we can make the gap, the, the error is small. And this is the character, the, the, the time, the evolution, total evolution time should be much larger than one over gap squared. Okay, uh, this is uh, what we call adiabatic theorem, but uh, in reality, this is not what happens. In reality, your system is coupled to environment and the energy levels are broadened and the broadening of the energy level eventually when the, the system is large and the gap is very small and the broadening is very, the, the, the coupling to environment is large, then the broadening will be larger than the gap and there will be no well-defined gap. And therefore, the adiabatic theorem that I described to you in the previous slide does not work. So how, how can we describe the, the system in such a case? As I told you, I will uh, tell you two methods. One of them is density matrix approach. Uh, I write the Hamiltonian as system, Hamiltonian plus environment plus interaction with completely generally. I, uh, introduce density matrix for system plus environment again very generally and this this is very general the uh, evolution equation for the density matrix but i am not interested on, on the the system and environment i'm interested on the system so therefore i trace out the the environmental degrees of freedom and and introduce the reduced density matrix and in this type of problem there's a, a, a preferred basis and that's energy basis. So I, I represent my density matrix in the energy basis, but, but we have to notice that energy basis is time dependent because the system Hamilton changes with time. So in the evolution equation,